All right. So yes, my name is Robert Notch, and I will be talking about my favorite topic, which is streams. And uh, streams is actually what got me started uh, contributing to Node. We are heavy users of streams at Next Edition. And two or three years back, we started using streams very heavily, and we ended up with one special case after another, which led us to a little bit of frustration. And that was my project to try to resolve all of these frustrations and get streams hard in Node. So what does that mean? So we would like to have predictable and consistent behavior. I know a lot of people make a lot of assumptions that are totally reasonable regarding to how streams behave and work. And you're right in 95% of the cases, but in 5% of cases, you're totally wrong. And that's one of the things we're trying to fix. And uh, yeah, streams have a very long history in Node, and there's been you know, improved APIs and changes. So somehow, when we as library developers want to build libraries around uh, streams, or actually as users use streams, we need to have some way to make these old kinds of streams still work for us. And that's uh, quite a difficulty. And there's a lot of uh, stream-like objects out in the ecosystem. So basically, people that don't think streams have um, good enough performance, they try to emulate the streams API. I know Matteo is uh, good at this. So we have like Sonic Boom and uh, um, Thread Streams and stuff like that that are not quite streams. They're more like stream-like. Uh, and actually, uh, even um, in the HTTP API, the outgoing message is not a real stream. It's just something pretending to be a stream. And then we also want to unify you know, special custom core implementations that you know, are based on streams, but in different ways work around the API so they don't quite behave as normal streams. Um, so I would like to start with stream events. These are the trickiest ones. So these are the events that you have in streams today. There are a few more, but uh, you shouldn't really need those, in my opinion. So these are the, the primary ones you're going to use. And uh, there are some rules with events that we want to follow. So uh, users should not be emitting uh, these stream events. So please don't do emit error, for example. I've seen that a lot of code where, you know, uh, users, uh, want, oh, there's an error in my stream. Let's just emit error. Don't do that. Use destroy and send the error in. Because if you emit error, then you're going to break a lot of invariants that uh, streams expect. So don't emit any of the native stream events, or you're going to end up in undefined behaviors. Uh, events should be emitted in the next tick. So if you register an event listener, you should be pretty safe that it won't be invoked until the next tick. Unfortunately, data, the, the data event does not follow this rule always. And preferably, when you register events, you shouldn't have side effects. So registering a, an event handler should, in the perfect world, have, be side effect free. Unfortunately, both data and readable do this. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. So moving on. Close is a reasonably new event in uh, Node streams. And basically, this is emitted when the stream has completed destruction. So if you call destroy, uh, the uh, destroy handler is called, you call the callback, and then close is emitted. So this basically means the stream is finished. And uh, it's only emitted once, and no other event is allowed to be emitted after this. Now, in the past, um, node, uh, before Node 14 and even after Node 14, it was still possible that other events would be emitted, like error could be emitted in certain cases after close, and even end and data. So this is something we fixed. So uh, we have a reasonable assurance that close is the last event that is going to be emitted. Once close is emitted, the stream is done. You're safe to forget about it. Error is also when, as I said, you invoke a destroy with an error, then error is going to get uh, emitted, and then finally close. <laughs> error should only be emitted once, and only close is allowed to be emitted after an error. Again, these are things that haven't been true in the past, 
but now they are. You might have assumed that, uh, you know, after error, only clothes is omitted, but that wasn't always true. So we've done a lot of work to try to make sure these invariants are followed. Um, data. So, you know, whenever you read data from a, a stream, it gets um, uh, em emitted, which is not so strange. But as soon as you uh, register an event handler on data, the stream starts flowing, which means that it starts reading data. I've seen a lot of examples out there where you have a bug, for example, somebody wants to keep track of how many bytes you've read from this stream, but you just want to uh, register that and then pass the stream on to someone else that in a later tick is going to start reading from that stream. But what those other people are going to notice is there's a lot of data missing in the beginning, because as soon as you register the data handler, you're going to start the stream. So the way to get around that is use the event meter prototype on and call that. That will get around the problem where the stream will get start by itself. So remember, if you register a data handler, the stream will start flowing. Be careful. Another problem with data, uh, it can be emitted in the same thick. So here I have a little uh, example where if the stream is already flowing, you call read and then register an event listener. The event listener won't be called for that read. So this breaks the rule where, where you know if any events should be emitted in the next tick so you can register the event handlers. And the, unfortunately, the only way around this is make sure to call read after you register data. Otherwise, you might miss stuff. And also, emitted when the last data, so you're reading a lot of data, end gets emitted, and then uh, if you're lucky, there's no more errors, and then close gets emitted. Of course, close could be emitted in between these two. It's emitted only once, and no data events are allowed afterwards. You might not believe this, but you know we've had uh, streams that has continued emitting data even after end. So again, just to reflect, you, it's a reasonable assumption that you know after end there's no more data coming, but in those three percent of the cases, you would be wrong. Um, and that's what we've spent a lot of work, you know, uh, getting this consistency and predictability there. Uh, another thing we've changed recently is uh, streams have a feature called auto-destroy. So basically, when end for readable or finish for writables is emitted, uh, streams will automatically call destroy. Uh, this was uh, false in the past. We've changed the default now, so it's true. So hopefully all streams get destroyed eventually. A, a common bug out there for users is, you know, they, they read the stream, they get to end, but they never destroy it. So basically you don't clean it up. If, you know, I've read all the data, there's an assumption that I don't need to do anything more with the stream, but that hasn't been true in the past. You had to also destroy it. But now with the uh, change in the defaults, it will actually get destroyed automatically. So if there are no errors, you don't have to worry about it anymore. And if there are errors, or errors automatically destroy the stream. But please try to avoid using events. Now, in the best of worlds, like the things I just told you is how it works, and you can, uh, you can um, trust that. But when you use NPM modules and you know, streams that you don't know are for sure based on these uh, the core stream implementation, the events might be working in different ways. So we provide some helper tools in, in, in Node Core to, uh, that you should use instead. For example, we have stream finished. So this is basically a function to get notified when a stream is, yeah, basically when the stream is done. Um, and this has, you know, we've tried to make uh, compatibility support for streams that don't emit close or only emit end and finish and lots of old style streams. So we, we've worked pretty hard to try to unify and the compatibility here. So all you can trust that uh, when you call stream finish, to the best of our knowledge, it has completed. Now, how would you implement this? I, I was a little unsure in which order I should show you this, but uh, we're going to go with this one. So a na naive way to implement stream finished based on what I've told you so far and uh, information from previous talks is you could use, you know, just await uh, event emitter one stream close, right? So when a close is emitted, the stream is done. 
There's a little problem with this, though. Um, what if the stream already errored or already closed before you call this function? Then you're basically deadlocked. So what we would like to do is to check, oh, has the stream already errored? Yeah, then we throw that error. Has the stream already closed? Then we return. Uh, these two properties are just about to land in Node, so they don't exist yet, but hopefully soon. The, the other problem here is, and this is a problem with streams in general, what happens if you destroy a stream without passing an error? So if somebody is consuming your readable and you destroy it like this, then the, the consumer, from him, his perspective, the stream finished successfully. There were no problems. You can you know, save the hash for the data, and this is the complete safe data. You're right? But that's not true. So for example, here, if, if I do readable destroy and then I wait finished, I would kind of expect an error here because I've aborted the stream or some kind of signal that you know, this uh, stream was prematurely uh, complete, uh, uh, canceled. But you don't. So what do we do? Well, we need some way to read, OK, so if the stream was aborted, uh, then we throw an abort error. Actually, this should be after the await EE once, but I'll fix that later. Uh, but the, and these properties, again, they don't exist yet. So we are, I'm trying to land them as we speak. But this is basically how we could implement Finnish, just so we get a basic understanding of what we expect. Now. Uh, of course, and then you may, might want to have um, support for abort signal. I added this while uh, Benjamin was talking about cancellation, so you know he wouldn't get angry with me. <laughs> so that's how that works. So going back to stream, we have um, stream finish implemented in core, and there has I think it's been there for quite a while actually, and, and some of the things I have uh, talked about haven't been true. So. Let's see what we've done to fix them. So the first thing we've uh, changed there is, in the past, stream finish would only wait for the end and or the finish event. It wouldn't actually wait for the streams to close. Now, uh, why is that important? Because it's not until close that you know that there was no errors and that all the resources have been cleaned up. So for example, uh, things I've noticed in the wild is, when the stream has some kind of mutex. And then, you know, you do stream finished, and you would assume that the mutex has been released, and you can call lock on it again. But that wasn't always the case, because uh, you would actually finish when you got the end event. So that's something we've changed. So here's an example. Actually, while we're on this example, I'd like to point out some new features we have in streams. So we have something called construct in streams now, which basically allows you, allows you to have asynchronous construction of streams and uh, unifies how uh, uh, you know, uninitialized streams should behave. Uh, the reason we added this is we, have, we had a lot of places in Node Core that, for example, opening files or network socket, etc., they would behave differently while in this you know, non-ready state. So in order to try to unify the behavior and make, you know, if, if uh, file streams behave in one way, it should be safe to assume that you know, net uh, sockets behave about the same way. And it's not special cases all the time. So we added construct to try to sort that out. Uh, another thing to keep in mind, when, especially when working with streams, don't swallow errors. Try to, if you have, you know, people, uh, the user can pass in an uh, error into destroy. And while destroying it, you could have another error, for example, error two. And, uh, we don't want to, you know, make errors disappear. So please use aggregate error, which is a new feature in Node as well, to make sure that your user gets all the information about what happened. Now, going back to this example, uh, this is basically taking a lock, and when you destroy it, it unlocks. Now, when you do await stream finish readable here, you would assume that is locked is false here. Because in the destroy here, we have uh, unlock. In the past, this was not true. So when the stream ended, the finish would be go out, and that assertion would fail. And we actually have a lot of, we had a few issues in Node Core about this specific issue. But that's been fixed now. Um, another problem is this premature close and cancellation. So what if close is emitted before or end, finish, and error, or these things are not uh, emitted at all? I talked a little about that before. Uh, 
Otherwise, we might incorrectly assume that the stream was successfully completed. Going back to the example I had before. So, you know, we, uh, uh, we use uh, once readable close, it will complete, we get no error, even though we've aborted the stream. So now with stream finished, we will get a stream premature close error. Now, why don't we get an abort error, which would be maybe a more natural way? Well, there's two reasons. Uh, when this was implemented, we didn't have abort errors in Node. And this isn't always because of an abort, because there's all also you know, incorrect implementations of streams that you know, might emit close, but then afterwards uh, emit error and or finish. So we have this stream premature close. And that premature close can either be because of a bug or because, or bug in the sense that it's not the way streams are supposed to work, or uh, the user had called destroy without an error. Please try to avoid doing this. You know, if you destroy a stream, please pass an error telling us why you're uh, destroying it. Uh, and if you're just consuming it, you don't have to, given that auto destroy is enabled, which it should, uh, you don't need to destroy it. So the, there should really be very few cases where you should just call destroy without an error. Uh, so, and then going back a little bit, when you implement your streams, if somebody calls it without an error, and for example, in a readable case, it hasn't ended, you can help the user. Give him an abort error then, right? Be nice. And likewise with writable. If the user, you know, because a lot of users think of destroy as cancel. And cancel, you don't always have to give a reason. You would assume that it's, uh, it's the assumption is that that's an abort. But that's an incorrect assumption. But please try to implement streams like this. Uh, and then when, even when users, for whatever reason, don't use stream finished, it will kind of work for them. Uh, Another thing that we talked about here is in the past, stream finished would always wait for the events. So if the, you, know, you call stream finished, it's finished, and then you call stream finished again, then you would deadlock on the last one because we did no introspection on the state. We've changed that now, so you know, if the, if the uh, stream finished before you called finished on it, then you know, okay, we can move on. Likewise, you know, if the stream errored, so the stream errored before you call stream finish. And in the past, you would just deadlock. Now it will rethrow. So it will rethrow the error that happened before so you don't lose it. Uh, we've also added um, support for uh, stream finished uh, for abort signal. So now you can just you know, pass a signal, and that should work out properly. Um, I think uh, Benjamin mentioned this. We now have support for async iterator. So you can just do a for await const chunk of readable. There are a lot of ways to read streams in Node. You have um, dot read and the readable event. You have pipe. You have the data event with pause and resume. Please avoid those when possible. Use for await when you can. Usually, the performance difference is, for most use cases, in my opinion, negligible. So just use this, and the semantics are you know, predefined. You can trust that this kind of works like it should. With, uh, with pipe and read and readable, there are a lot of edge cases you have to be careful about. Like, for example, this, uh, especially when you start mixing pipe and uh, the readable APIs, then you get into really weird stuff. Uh, with, especially with back pressure. So my recommendation, try to stay away from those APIs when you can, and just stick with the async uh, readable, uh, async iterator API. It makes everyone's life much easier and better. Uh, of course, when you have, you know, you need to tee the streams, so you're reading it multiple times, then, yeah, then maybe pipe is better. But uh, in most cases, I think this is sufficient. And it should work from everything from HTTP streams to you know, file streams to all of those. That's good. Um, some new features we've added. Uh, so we have basically something called duplex from that you can use to build streams in different ways. So for example, if you have a readable stream, 
and you have a writable stream, and you would like to you know, combine them into one duplex, you can do that with this. So uh, you can basically send here anything that is uh, um, a readable. That can be a stream, an async generator, uh, a generator. Um, uh, yeah, check the documentation, and likewise with writable. So a common case for this is you, you have a readable stream, and you have a writable stream. And you want to create a duplex from that. There is a popular library on NPM called Duplexify. Um, this does basically that, but uh, in my opinion, in a better way. So if you use dupli Duplexify, please consider using this if you're on uh, node 16 or later. Uh, we can create a, a stream from a generator. So you can uh, do your async function generator, yield a weight. Notice here that I have to instantiate the generator to get an async iterable. If it's an async iterable, duplex from knows that this is a readable. So basically, you will get a duplex that pretty much behaves the same way as a readable. It just has some uh, the writable methods and the getters. But other than that, it should behave just as a readable. So you could actually think of duplex from as a stream from. Uh, and likewise, you can uh, pass it an async generator function. Uh, in this case, it should take a source and a signal. Please use the signal when you do this. Uh, and if you have uh, async API calls inside of your uh, generator, pass that signal along. Because otherwise, you get uh, problems with cancellation. So basically, what this will give you is a transform stream. So this is just a fancy or more user-friendly way of implementing a transform stream. And uh, you know, if you put stuff before the 408, there you have your initiation, put the try finally, and then in the finally you can do the resource cleanup. So it's a really easy way to just create, implement your streams. Now, yes, this isn't as fast as just implementing uh, streams directly. But again, 90% of the cases, it doesn't matter. Um, and then finally, we can also create a writable. So if you pass it an async function, uh, again, it takes a source and signal. You should be returning a promise, not a generator. And then you get a writable stream. So this is just a, you know, a simple way to implement streams with least amount of edge cases that you have to be concerned about. So I, I strongly recommend using this. Uh, and then, moving on, stream pipeline. Uh, this has been in the uh, node for a while now. Uh, we have a promise version of it that takes a signal. Please use this. Don't you know, uh, use pipe or any other ways to you know, pipe your streams together. Use pipeline, and pipeline will take care of as many edge cases and compatibility issues as possible. Uh, and all of these fixes I've been talking about so far also apply to pipeline. Uh, pipeline uses duplex from, so you can actually pass you know, your uh, async functions into the, uh, pipeline directly. Pipeline is actually also pretty smart. So if you do this, pipeline won't convert them into streams. They will actually, pipeline will try to do it the most optimal way and just read your async generators and just pass them along. So it tries to avoid making you know, unnecessary glue streams. And that's good for memory usage, and it's good for, for performance. So, and this is a simple way to, to just uh, work with your streams. Uh, now, a, a common, uh, like if you don't use the uh, promise base, this will actually return uh, the last stream as a readable. So you would think, cool, now I can compose my new streams. But pipeline doesn't return a writable stream. So there has been some requests for you know, being able to compose streams, so basically building streams out of other streams. So we've added something called stream compose. And basically what it does is you, know, you can put in your uh, different streams, and it will return a duplex to you that writes to the first one and reads from the last one, and then everything is passed between. You can also you know, start with a readable stream or end with a writable stream, and then you, know, you get a uh, read-only or write-only duplex. You can even uh, create a closed loop that is neither readable or writable, 
uh, which basically is uh, as doing it in a pipeline, and then you can, you know, just call um, uh, um, stream finished on that. So basically, you know, you can use stream pipeline, or you just do stream finished, stream compose. It's the, roughly the same thing. Um, and yes, stream compose also uses duplex from, so you can, you know, uh, send pass in a, an object with a writable and a readable, and it will automatically convert it. And we try to take care of all the H cases for you. So the point of these, all of these uh, stream pipeline, stream finished, and stream compose is that you shouldn't interact with the streams directly uh, and make you know, assumptions that might not be true depending on the implementation of the stream. Instead, we try to you know, take care of all of these H cases that we know of and help you out to you so that streams are somewhat predictable. Um, so that's stream compose. Um, so a little work, we have uh, other things we've done in core. So incoming message uh, has ha haven't, you know, hasn't been uh, emitting close and those kind of things. So we've made sure incoming message works as a normal stream. Outgoing message is funny, it's not actually a stream. It's a stream-like object, so it tries to pretend to be a stream, and therefore it doesn't always act like one. The reason for that, we actually have tried multiple times making outgoing message a uh, normal stream, but the performance regression, this is one of those cases where performance matters, have, haven't been acceptable. So we're still trying to, you know, either make a base class for writable or in some way getting outgoing message to actually be a normal stream. But for now, it's a stream-like object, and we've tried really hard making it, uh, all the events and all the properties to behave like you would expect. Uh, but that's the trickiest one so far. Uh, stream transform used to be a special stream. You would think it's just a duplex that has a little function between the writable and the readable end. But it, it, it was a very complicated um, implementation that was totally custom and went around things. We've re with the, all the fixes we've done, we've re-implemented re stream transform. So it has just a duplex stream with a transform function. And this is part of making you know, Node more maintainable and also more predictable and getting around the special behaviors. Uh, NetSocket was also you know, one of those custom stream implementations. They had, we had like a writable and readable property that would start out being false and then turn true and then going back to false and behaving a little bit in its own kind of way. Um, so that's been fixed to a large degree. And then we have all the destroy methods uh, in streams that we put a lot of work in, making sure they emit close, making sure you know, you can, it, it can't emit error twice. And uh, things like, what happens if you call destroy twice? Once without an error and once with an error? What should happen? Um, and, and the answer is, if you call destroy once, you know, any other call to destroy is ignored. Uh, before, you could, for example, you know, call destroy and thinking, OK, I've destroyed this. Nobody else is going to touch it. And then you know, somebody could call destroy with an error, and all of a sudden, it will emit an error that you didn't expect. Um, so. That's also things we have sorted out. Uh, and I've actually gone through this pretty fast, so I have uh, two minutes for questions. If anyone has those, hands up. Yes? Uh, so events, uh, streams use uh, event emitter. Uh, and I don't expect that to change anytime soon. Um, yeah, things we are looking at a little bit is, or at least I've tried to sort out, is um, if you call destroy without an error, um, it would be nice if at least core streams would help the user out and con you know uh, emit an uh, abort error for you, at least for, for example, file streams, which are quite common. I've seen examples where people have, you know, oh, my file got corrupted. Uh, and I didn't get any error. And those are the things uh, I would like to avoid. But uh, yeah, things go slow in uh, Node sometimes, especially with some very major 
changes, it can take a little while before it gets out in the wild. All right, any other questions? Yes? Can you come a little closer? OK. okay, okay. Yeah, cheers. OK, it seems I'm out of time. Uh, thank you, everyone.